Monday, 15th week after Pentecost, morning meditation, September 14th, 2020, Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Morning meditations taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. <clears throat> Act of Faith in the Presence of God. In nomine Patria, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Most holy and adorable Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, Reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, <clears throat> one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of Humility, Litany of Humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. <clears throat> that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever-Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, plena dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or nobis peccatoribus, nuc mihor mortis nostra. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritu Sancto, Sicut erat in principio, nuc et semper, in secula, seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning meditation, oh, that I had time to repair the past. One of the greatest causes of distress and anguish to the careless Christian at the hour of death is the remembrance of the bad use he made of the time he should have employed to acquire merits for heaven, by which he used, alas, only to heap up punishment for himself in hell. Oh, that I had time to repair the past. Time shall be no longer. Oh, that I had time to repair the past, thus will be the careless Christian speak. But when? 
when the oil in the lamp is consumed, when he on the point of entering into eternity. One of the greatest causes of the distress and anguish of the careless Christian at the hour of death is the remembrance of the bad use he has made of the time he ought to have used to acquire merits for heaven, by which he has used to damn his soul. Oh, that I had time! Do you seek for time? You have lost so many nights in gambling, and so many years in indulging the senses, without ever thinking of your soul, and now you seek for time. But now, quote, time shall be no longer. Apocalypse ten six. Were you not already admonished by preachers to be prepared for death? Were you not told that it would come upon you when you least expected it? Quote, be you ready, says Jesus Christ, for... At what hour you think not the Son of Man will come? Luke 12, verse 40. You have despised my admonitions and voluntarily squandered the time my goodness bestowed upon you in spite of your demerits. But now time is at an end. Listen to the words in which the priests that assist you will tell you to depart from this world. Go forth, Christian soul, from this world. And where will you go? to eternity, to eternity. Death respects neither subjects nor monarchs. When it comes, it does not wait even for a moment. Thou has appointed, quote, thou has appointed his bounds, which cannot be passed. Job 14, verse 5. Oh, what terror will the dying man feel at hearing the assisting priest tell him to depart from this world? What dismay will he experience in saying to himself, quote, This morning I am living, and this evening I shall be dead. Today I am in this house, tomorrow I shall be in the grave. Where will my soul be found? Unquote. His terror will be increased when he sees the death candle lighted, and when he hears the confessor order the relatives to withdraw from his chambers and to return to it no more. It shall be still more increased when the confessor gives him the crucifix and tells him to embrace it, saying, quote, Take Jesus Christ to your heart and think no more of this world. Unquote. He takes the crucifix and kisses it, but in kissing it, he trembles at the remembrance of the many injuries he has offered to Jesus Christ. He would now wish to repent sincerely of all his injuries to his Savior, but he sees that his repentance is forced by the necessity of his approaching death. Quote, he, says St. Augustine, who is abandoned by sin before he abandons it, gives it up not freely, but through necessity. Unquote. The common delusion of worldlings is that earthly things are great, and that the things of heaven, as being distant and uncertain, appear to be of little value. They regard tribulations as insupportable, and grievous sins as unimportant. The miserable beings are as if they were shut up in a room filled with smoke, which hinders them from seeing the objects before their eyes. But the hour of death, this darkness will vanish, and the soul will begin to see in their real colors. At that hour, all temporal things appear to be what they really are. Vanity, lies, deception, and the things of eternity will assume their true value. Oh, how important will judgment, hell, and eternity, so much disregarded during life, appear at the time of death? According as they will begin to appear in their true colors, the fears of the dying man will increase. Quote, the nearer the sentence of the judge approaches, the more sensible the fear of con condemnation becomes. Unquote, says St. Gregory. Hence the sick man will say, quote, Oh, in what anguish do I die? Unhappy me! Oh, that I knew that so unhappy a death awaited me! Unquote. You did not know it, but you should have foreseen it. For you knew that a good death should not be expected after a wicked life. Spiritual Reading, The Predominant Passion our passions are not of themselves bad or hurtful. When regulated according to the dictates of reason and prudence, they do, do us no injury, 
but are, on the contrary, profitable to the soul. But when disorderly, they are productive of irreparable mischief to those who obey them. For when any passion takes possession of the heart, it obscures the truth and makes the soul incapable of distinguishing between good and evil. Ecclesiasticus implored the Lord to deliver him from a mind under the sway of passion. Quote, Give me not over to a shameless and foolish mind. Ecclesiasticus 23, verse 6. Let us then be careful not to allow any bad passion to rule over us. Quote, Only this I have found, said Solomon, that God made man right, and he hath entangled himself with an infinity of questions. Ecclesiasticus 7, verse 30. Quote, God made man right, unquote. That is, in the state of justice, but giving ear to the serpent, man exposed himself to temptation and was conquered. He rebelled against God, and his passions rebelled against himself. These are the passions which, according to St. Paul, cause a continual war between the flesh and the spirit. Quote, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 17. However, with the aid of divine grace, it is in man's power to resist these passions and not allow them to rule over him. It is, as the Lord told Cain, even in the power of man to rule over them and to bring them into subjection to reason. Quote, but the lusts thereof shall be under thee, and thou shalt have dominion over it. Genesis 4, verse 7. Let the assaults of the flesh and of the devil to make us abandon the way of God be ever so violent. Jesus Christ has said, quote, Lo, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, verse 21. Within us, God has established a kingdom in which the will is the queen that ought to rule over all the senses and passions. And what greater honor or glory can a man have than to be the master of of his passions. The proper regulation of the motions of the mind constitutes the interior mortification so much recommended by spiritual masters, and secures the salvation of the soul. The health of the body depends on the regulation of the humors. If one of them predominate to excess, it causes death. But the health of the soul consists in the proper control of the passions by reason. But when any passion rules over reason, it first enslaves and then kills the soul. Many pay great attention to their external conduct. They endeavor to appear modest and respectful. But at the same time, they cherish in their hearts sinful affections against justice, charity, humility, or chastity. For them is prepared the chastisement with which the Savior threatened the scribes and Pharisees who were careful to have their cups and dishes clean, but nourished within unjust and unclean thoughts. Quote, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you may clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but within you are full of rapine and uncleanness. Matthew 23, verse 25. The royal prophet says that all the beauty of a soul that is the true daughter of God consists in, in an interior goodwill. Quote, all the glory of the king's daughter is within. Psalm 44, verse 14. Of what use is it, says St. Jerome, to abstain from food and at the same time to allow the mind to swell with pride, or to abstain from wine and to be intoxicated with anger? Christians who act in this manner do not lay aside their vices. They only cover them with the mantle of devotion. <coughs> Excuse me. A man then must divest himself of all bad passions. Otherwise, he will not be the king over, but the slave of his passions. And in, and in opposition to the command of the apostle, Sin shall reign in his heart. Quote, Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, so as to obey the lusts thereof. Romans 6, verse 12. 
Man, then, is, as St. Thomas says, the king of himself when he regulates his body and his carnal affections according to reason. But, according to St. Jerome, quote, when the soul serves vice, she loses the honor of a throne, unquote. She loses the honor of a queen and becomes, as our Lord says, the slave of sin. Quote, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. John 8, verse 34. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will, that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O trying God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon me. And I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay that thou mayest abandon me? And that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and my holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. Have a pleasant and blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.